Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Moms Living a Life They Love Summit, where I am interviewing many women who have it all, okay? A flourishing family, a fulfilling career, and a ton of fun in the process. And I'm super excited about today's interview. This is Nihal Shizal, and she is the co-founder of the Baby Catan, okay? I know you all have heard of it. It's a fabulous baby carrier, but thank you so much for being here today, Mahal. Thank you for having me, Brooke. Awesome, well, let's just get right into it. So, um, you guys, she's not only a business owner, but she's also a mom. So tell us a little bit about your family. Okay, well, I am a single mom. I have three children. My oldest, Kobe, is 17. He has Down syndrome. Okay. And then I have a daughter, Noah, who's 14, and a daughter, Allie, who's 12. Awesome. Um, yes. And actually, just to sort of roll into it, Kobe was the inspiration behind the business and sort of what led us to where we are today. So it's sort of, and we always say born out of, things are born out of necessity, but. Yeah, that is one of my favorite parts about your story is that you had a need as a mommy and you created it. So let's get right into it. How did that come to fruition? What was the idea that you had? What was the need that you had as a mommy? Okay, so before I even knew I had a need, <laughs> um, I, I had 17 years ago, was my, I had my first child, and um, obviously did not know, you know, that he was going to be born with Down syndrome and low muscle tone, so a lot on our plate, and um, wanting to do everything like all the other parents, you know, really didn't want to do things differently. I felt that it doesn't matter what he has, we're going to do the same thing we would have done had we had a typical child. You know, one with special needs, typical, it doesn't matter. So at that point, I had a lot of baby gear that I got for my baby shower. One of them was just your standard baby carrier. I put him in it, and his physical therapist told me that I was not good for him. He had low muscle tone. That's part of having Down syndrome. You have hypotonia. And she said that he was not sitting in it appropriately, and I had to take him out. So at that point, I was a little PO'd. I was like, I'm going to do everything the way everyone else is doing. So that's where, you know, it's the concept started. I was experimenting with different carriers. We were playing around, trying different things, and moving ahead over a few years, the Baby Catan carrier was born. It wasn't called the Baby Catan carrier back then. It was just two pieces of fabric. Um, I put him in it, and his physical therapist said, yes, he is sitting in a developmentally appropriate way. And I said, bank it, awesome. And that was it. Didn't plan on making it, selling it, nothing of that sort. Um, I mean, at the time I was day trading and raising one kid, then a well, second kid, then I started a marketing firm. It was the farthest thought from my mind. But we did wear it everywhere. And we always would say if we had a penny for every comment we got, we'd be millionaires by now. Um, wore it with my daughter as well. You don't have to have special needs to use the baby Cathon carrier. Um, and continuously got these comments. Is that a t-shirt? Is there a baby in your shirt? What is that? Where can I get it? Then fast forward a little, um, friends of ours had a son who had open heart surgery after he was born. We lent them our modified baby carrier, the homemade one. They said, oh my God, this is amazing. And we said, yeah, if we had a penny for every comment we got, and they said, oh my God, this is amazing. And then we both started modifying it and making it a little, like tweaking it and making it a little better. And then we made the decision to just take that leap of faith and go into business and I went into business with my business partner and we started in my kitchen with boxes in a bedroom, working on a, I'm not even going to call it a shoestring budget because we had no budget. Mm -hmm. um, and we literally started knowing nothing and learning as we grew. And that was 10 years ago. Wow. Oh my gosh. So I'm sure there's moms listening right now that have an idea or have a need and therefore an idea can be born. What was like step one, two, and three that you took to get this off the ground that you could share with them? Hmm. I don't it's think it's as organized. Way back. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, I don't think it's as organized as step one, two, and three. Because okay. at the time it might have been, hmm, let's do this. Step one is to make a prototype. <laughs> Step two is to sell it, you know. But looking back, I think that certain words come to mind that really helped play into building a business from nothing, literally nothing, is being resilient, 
being resourceful and being willing to overcome any unique challenges that come your way, which are going to be so many, you can't even begin to imagine. So this is while you're raising your children. I happen to have a child with special needs as well. So it's a lot on my plate. I went through a divorce um, a few years into the business. And so, you know, at that point I was a single mom. Um, so really, where do I start? It was more of a, like I said, being resilient. We were like, you're just going to do it. Nothing's going to get in our way. Even if we don't succeed, at least we tried. Next thing is resourceful. We had to be. We didn't have a marketing budget. We didn't have employees. We didn't even know where to manufacture. So it was just being resourceful. First, I remember 10 years ago, we were reaching out to any local organization that would offer mentoring. So we found these these, these guys who used to be in the textile industry on the garment district in New York and they were in Florida and they were so excited and willing to mentor us on, on anything that had to do with textile wise. And we knew nothing about fabric. We just had this great idea for this amazing baby carrier that fit like a t-shirt. So we just were resourceful. They didn't charge us. <laughs> they sat with us. They talked to us about fabric. And that was just one tiny piece of building a business was knowing something about fabric. But we were resourceful in so many ways. I mean, pounding the pavement. I didn't have anyone to do sales or marketing for me, so did it all. Now I have 12 employees and it's amazing, but at the time, and it was years, let me tell you, it doesn't happen overnight. It was letting any failure be an opportunity to learn from it and do the next thing. So if I would fly to Texas and run around and visit stores and Four said they weren't interested, and then one said they were. Well, it wasn't four failures, it was one success. <laughs> and that's what we started doing. It's amazing to think about it now when I walk into, you know, Babies Are Us or Bed Bath & Beyond, you know, Bye Bye Baby Store, and I see us on the shelves, and it's a brand name, you know, it's well known in the baby carrier world and, and in the juvenile products industry. And to think that 10 years ago, we were just literally in our kitchen with scissors cutting printed promotional flyers that we were going to go, you know, tell stores about this new amazing baby carrier and why it was so different than the others. So resourceful is a huge, huge thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I know it's not a step one, two, three. It's like words that, that help you overcome that fear of maybe taking the next step and doing something that you're uncertain about. Um, another thing I was thinking this the other day before our interview is Every time you think about something that you do, that you know well, like right now, I know baby carriers, I know the juvenile products industry, my company's doing amazing, it's, it's great. But there was a time when I didn't know anything about it. But that goes with anything. So if you're a parent and you're like, oh, I know how to parent. Well, guess what? You really didn't before you had the baby. <laughs> and you grew and learned as you went along. So anything that you know now and you do well, at one point you did not know it and you did not know how to do it. There was always a point where you didn't. So think of that time prior to when you knew nothing about it, but you're doing it now. So don't be scared of the next thing you're going to do, because if you're, you have this fear that I, I've never done that, I, I can't, I can't start this business. I can't, I can't start this service. I can't, I've never done it. Well, guess what? There's everything you're doing now you had never done at one point. So, it's true. I mean, that's a good way to think about it. And it's a good, like a, if you keep telling yourself, it's good motivation. Absolutely. And I love that you hit on that because I think one of the biggest things that blocks us or prevents us from really going after what we want is the fear of the unknown. A hundred percent. The fact that our anxious brains want to be able to see step A through Z, but we don't even know B yet. And until we can figure that out, we're scared to take the next best step. But what I love about your story is you weren't afraid to pick up the phone and ask for help and say, hey, will you be my mentor? That's a huge but thing. Also. Talk to people face to face and get what you need. It's, it's a huge thing. I got to tell you also, another thing is interesting. My team the other day, let me find the email actually. Um, they submitted, there was a, and this is after you and I spoke that, you know, they, my marketing team had said, Hey, Michal, I have to find it. So this is really on the fly. <laughs> Just so you know, <laughs> so you see, I do things on the fly, this but life people this is real life. And this is live and this is on the fly so we were submitting it was a request a reporter asking for business owners to give let's say I think it was four words and I'm bear with me I'm gonna look for it while I talk okay. um, they say you know four words that would describe 
you or, or your business um, or what you need to succeed as an entrepreneur. And I just like had to wing it because there was a deadline to submit it. And my marketing team was like, they need to submit it by 7 p.m. So I literally was like the four words or three words that came to mind for the life of me. I'm not going to find this email. This is such a bummer. Hold on. I found it. Okay. It was four words. And I was like, I got to think of four words. So right away I said motivation, perseverance, patience, and humility. So I was thinking motivation. That's an obvious. Most of the time you want to start a business or you want to start something new. You have to be motivated. If you're not motivated, you're not going to do it. So the motivation has to come from within, but it's good to have a good support system because they'll motivate you. If you have people around you are saying you're going to fail, hopefully you're strong enough to say, you know what, I got to try it anyway, but it helps to have a support system. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Perseverance, obviously, you keep on pushing. So like I said, you can't, even if one store doesn't want, like in the beginning, they said, we'd never heard of Baby Catan. What is that? And I would say, this is awesome. It's just a baby carrier. You put it on like a t-shirt. It's like you're wearing a shirt and you put your baby in it. And it's so good for the development of your newborn to wear them on you and your hands are free. And what more can I tell you? They said, you know, we have like 10 baby carriers already. And I said, but this is so different. It has no hardware. It's so easy. You throw it in the washer and dryer. You can throw it in your diaper bag. They were like, yeah, yeah. Then one store said, let me try it. And they were like, this thing rocks. And I'm like, yay. <laughs> so it's perseverance. I would have never gotten to that store had I been already turned down by the others. Um, and then patience, because nothing happens overnight. Nothing. And we all know it takes years to build anything. They say it takes three to five years to even know if you'll be successful in your business. And you have to keep reminding yourself that. And in the first three to five years, I kept saying it's three to five years. We have some time. Now it's 10 years. And I'm like, ah, three to five years was nothing. At the time, it seemed like forever. You have to have patience. It, Rome wasn't built in a day. I mean, you know, what everybody says. Um, and then the last thing is humility. And that's where that mentoring comes in. So you can't think you know it all. Mm -hmm. We didn't know anything about this. This was brand new to us. We were just willing to sort of step out on, on the ledge because sometimes you just have to to get to the next stage in your life and to try something. If you didn't try it, you'll never know if you would have succeeded. So humility is really good because if you think you know it all, you're not going to get help from anyone because you're never going to ask for it. And we were, we were like, we don't know anything. <laughs> we don't know anything, please. Sorry, that's our office dog. That's Dakota barking in the background. Um, I can invite her in later. So yeah, and, and so those were the words that came to mind when I was answering this, this reporter question that my, my team was like, give us four words. And then they you know, elaborated on them. But I was thinking about that one. Humility is also the ability to delegate, to let go and accept help from others, which is huge if you're building a business. Um, I mean, even as a parent, it's huge because the minute you think you know it all or wanna do it all, that's when you're gonna crack. Mm -hmm. So there you have it, folks, four tips to help you be a mompreneur. But let me ask you this, after 10 years, three kiddos, a divorce, which we'll get to the single mom thing in a minute. Oh, that's a fun one. Don't worry. Um, how do you stay motivated? What motivates you like today? Well, first of all, my kids motivate me because my kids, if they have a project at school or they have to talk about inventions or something or success, they often will use baby Katana as an example or their mom. And that having that pride is priceless. So that's a huge motivation. So even if on a day I feel like I'm exhausted and I just want to be done or I just want to take a break or I just want to retire, mm -hmm. <laughs> that is such motivation. And it's really important for kids to see that, I think, in a parent. Yeah. And I mean, as long as they see that you're trying, it's okay if you don't succeed right away or if you succeed in different ways. It's not always financial but it's you know sometimes you succeed because you're just happy with what you did you can be volunteering whatever it is that you're doing if they see that they sense it so that is a huge motivator another big motivator is even though there's always a you always end up taking a step back but you also take two steps forward so look at the steps forward you're taking don't look at the steps back because if i if i did in the beginning so many mishaps like at the time when they happened, they seemed like a crisis. Mm -hmm. The world was coming to an end. We got our first shipment of carriers and they were missized. Mm -hmm. We put our first ad in American Baby Magazine back in the day when American Baby, I think, was still in print. <laughs> and because um, there's so few print publications now. And we spent, at the time, maybe it was $5,000. And we couldn't even imagine that was like, that was 
not even our, that was more than our, we didn't even have a budget. So that was more than our budget. And then we went and we ordered, I don't know, 10,000 carriers because we thought everyone would see this ad and not one sold because of the ad. It's wow. like things that you have to realize, right. And, and we were so resourceful in the things we did, like with my marketing budget, we, you know, we did it, like I said, it wasn't even called a shoestring budget. It was a no budget. It was just word of mouth and it was hit the ground running and just, you know, do it yourself, social media, whatever you can do for free. So being resourceful. Um, and so that is motivating to me because now I see that we finally do have a budget. It's still small. We still have a small marketing budget. We don't overspend. We're very conservative. We don't even have the funds to overspend, but you know, we're not Johnson and Johnson or Fisher Price. Mm -hmm. But with that said, we do have some budget, which we didn't have at all years ago. And so that's motivating in its own right. Cause I'm like, wow, we have a budget. <laughs> that's amazing. <laughs> I have a budget. Good. I can actually choose if I want to advertise them, but we do it very, very, we still do it really on the down and low because I feel like sometimes companies get ahead of themselves, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. That's awesome. So essentially your own growth inspires you every day because you see things moving and shaking and new possibilities, even something like a budget, right? That's amazing. Yes. And also another thing is trying new things. So we started the whole company based on Baby Catan, the Baby Catan Carrier. That was what started the business. My son being born with Down syndrome and then my business partner had a son with um, a heart defect that he needed surgery and sort of that propelled the whole, we've got to show this carrier to more people than just us, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but now we're starting to launch new line extensions. I mean, we want to grow the brand. So Baby Catan has been tried and true successfully, and it's really grown on a lot of organic growth and word of mouth. And now we launched a diaper bag, you know, that's a little different than the average diaper bag. It's swaddle blankets. So we're venturing into new uncharted waters that we now we're like a newbie again in those categories. You know, we're not known for our diaper bags yet. We're not known for our swaddle blankets. But if you don't try and you don't grow, you're never going to get to the next level. So it motivates me to see how successful we've become with Baby Catan and that we can do the same thing with the other products. I love it. So constant reinvention. Yes. And also, it's good to have that because if you put all your eggs in one basket, mm -hmm. I should invite Dakota in here. <laughs> do you hear her barking? Yeah, if you want. Oh, <laughs> Guys, we have kids, we have dogs, we have, this is, these are moms, being moms and running businesses, and so there's going to be dogs, there's going to be kids, and I love it. If she kind of doors open, I don't know. Okay, so she can choose. Yeah. So let me ask you this, how have you been able to grow this business while being a mom, and your, because your kids are now a little bit older, and you've had this business for 10 years, so you definitely have had You've done both this whole time yes. and throughout that have become a single mom. So how do you do it? Well, first is one is a huge thing that everyone I think is working on is time management. It's huge. Like we need to manage our time so well. So make time for downtime, make time for your kids and then make time to also work. You can't, and that's just time management. So if you're going to be all consumed with one thing, you're not going to be there for the other things and then they're going to suffer and then you're going to suffer. So if I was all consumed with work, which easily I could be, I could be all night, all night. I could be, Oh my God, I haven't caught up on my emails. Oh my God. I have to talk to my distributors. Oh. And then my kids are like, mommy, mommy, mommy. It just, it, 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 there's no point to doing that because then I'm not relaxed. I'm not there for them. Then they're stressed and we're stressed. And then there's turmoil in the family. So time management is huge. And you have to do it if you're going to have children and a career. You have to. Otherwise, I mean, if you're going to focus only on your children, your career will see no, no success. So you have to also not feel guilty and say, you know what? This is now the time that you need to do this because I need to work, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so, yes, that's very important. Another thing is I'm always trying to lower the stress levels <laughs> because there's a lot on my plate. So I'm trying to always think of a way to do that. And it's a work in progress. I was thinking that stress is the view of an event, not the event itself. Mm. So you can say this is happening and it's so stressful, but really, no, this is happening. I am stressed about it. Mm -hmm. So if you stop for a minute, I don't know, just thinking like always know that that's 
exactly what the event might want to elicit out of you, but it doesn't have to. And the event can be another person. <laughs> the, the event can be a circumstance in work. The event can be a child's grades. I mean, I'm like trying to think of different examples. The event can be co-parenting if you're a single parent and having to work with your ex. So the event can be a lot of things, but it doesn't have to be that the event is stressful. It's that you are, so take a step out and say the event's not stressful, so I don't need to be there. So that helps a lot. I'm not that good at it all the time. Mm -hmm. That helps a lot. So that's been, you know, something that I've been working on improving. Um, and then also I always think about focusing your efforts on on areas that are already successful so you can help them grow and maximize their effectiveness. So I know that I'm successful in marketing my brand and also encouraging my kids to, to do more, but I'm not that good at doing homework with them. <laughs> so I'm not going to keep focusing on homework with them because it's just going to be stressful. I'm just going to enlist someone else to help. Right. I just know. So I'm just going to delegate that out. <laughs> I'm just going to come to terms with it. My kids even, they're like, you never help us. You don't know math at all. And I go, I know. It's a wonder I even have a business. But <laughs> thank God we can hire people. Yeah. <laughs> so that's that's what it and again it can boil down to so many other things too. But like if you look at those two things, so much falls into that category. So if I say don't spread your budget too thin or your time too much too thin, it goes to the same thing. It's it's managing it correctly, focusing on the things you're strong at and thinking over and over that the event is not stressful. <laughs> mm -hmm. It is how you view it. So those are, I guess, some pointers that I've used <laughs> to help me manage and juggle everything. Yeah, no, I think that's so important. I mean, time management is definitely coming up as a theme in this interview series. Like we can't do it all in one day. We have to be really smart and strategic. And I love that you touched on and you have to know when to shut it down, right? Like it's okay to leave the rest of that email for tomorrow so you can put your kiddos to bed or it's okay right. to have your kiddos do this so you can work. But as moms, sometimes we feel like we have to like do it all and be the best and amazing. I think that as moms and women, we like that's ingrained in us. It's I, I've met very far and few between who are like, it's all good. <laughs> Like we feel like, I know for some reason, men, they have it so much easier, but mm -hmm. as women, we have to teach ourselves that we can't, we don't have to do it all. We don't have to be perfect at every single thing. No, no. And it's really being okay with what you got accomplished that day and the interaction you had with your kiddos and, and knowing like I've done enough and tomorrow's a new day and everything's still going to be there waiting for me. Exactly. And another thing that's interesting is I recently heard a speaker, um, I'm trying to remember her name to give her credit, but I'll think of her name soon. So, so I don't take credit, but she was at a business conference. Oh, hey, Al, oh, I'm going to close my door because it's getting loud. Sorry. No, 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 no. As you can see, this is on the fly. So um, she said something though that I liked and she was talking about also women entrepreneurs and, and you know women in business and managing business and children and building. Her goal was just to build all the wealth you can so you never have to rely on anyone. You know, that was her speaking topic. Mm -hmm. But with that comes, well, I, can, I can't accomplish everything but I have so much to do and how do I do it all? And I wanna do it all well. and. So she said, she got to this routine where she, every Sunday says, I want to accomplish three things this week. Mm -hmm. Just three things. And they don't all have to be business. They can also be, I'm going to do yoga this week. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to lose half a pound this week. Or I'm going to finish closing that contract with that potential distributor in China this week. You know, it can be, or I'm going to attend my child's second flag football game this week because I missed the first one. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is, three things. Yeah. And then anything above that is gravy or icing, yeah. right? Not gravy, right? Icing, I think is a better saying. Yeah. But, <laughs> but if you did that, then you're like, I did it. Mm -hmm. Now I'm like three, three, but that's crazy. I have, I have 35 a day, <laughs> but it's three. I don't, I don't even understand that. But then I'm like, oh, rein it in <laughs> because yeah. that's where the problems start. Do what yeah. she said. Because then you're like, I'm amazing because I did so much more than those three, you know? Yeah. It's it's hard. We do try to do it all. And it's really, you know, we have to learn not to feel bad if we don't get it all done. 
Absolutely. And I think that setting the three goals for a day really is playing like reverse psychology on yourself because the reality is, is everything above that is a win. But if you think about like with your kiddos, wouldn't you be thrilled if they got three things done a day? We would be stoked if they like brushed their teeth without asking, made their bed and did their homework. Their homework right. And I'd that's be like, whoa. Beyond. I don't, I, I mean, so I give up on even asking for half of it. <laughs> I'm like, uh, forget the bed. The right. teeth. All right. <laughs> homework. You're on your own. <laughs> yeah. Right. Are you alive? We're good for the day. Exactly. Oh. Are you wearing clean clothes? Well, at least clean underwear. All right. <laughs> Okay. Another thing I was thinking is here's another thing that's good. Mindfulness. I'm trying to work on this one too. This is like a new thing that I've been working on mm -hmm. is making the moment important. So be mindful of the moment you're in. Don't worry so much about the future. Stop obsessing about the past. Mm -hmm. And maybe that way you'll achieve the most you can. Because if you're always obsessing about the past, like it was so good last year, Our business was so much better the year before. My kids were way easier to deal with when they were five than they are when they are 10, you know, then you're not going to really get ahead. And if you're always thinking about the future, you're going to be overwhelmed. So mindfulness, be in the moment, in that day, today, what's going on right now, today, all I have is today. Yeah. Past is gone. I don't know if I'm going to get tomorrow. So I think that is a good thing for life in general, but it's good to put into your business and parenting and trying to do it all. Yeah, that's such a great point. And I would even add on top of that, when you're trying to be mindful and present, ask yourself a couple questions like, am I okay right now in this moment? Am I safe? Are my kiddos safe? Is my business okay? Because typically in the moment, everybody's okay. Right. It's true. Everything's fine. And so you can take an exhale and you can just kind of remind yourself like, okay, you know, I'm getting anxious about thinking about tomorrow, but in the moment I'm okay. And usually we operate from such a better place as a mom, as an entrepreneur, as a boss, when we're present in the moment, not in that, you know, anxious state or anxious upset. Of what's going to be, or oh, so stressed about something that just happened, you know, or yeah. happened yesterday or yes, agreed. And it's really hard to do that. The whole mindfulness in the moment thing. We started doing yoga in our office once a week. And so we bring the yoga teacher here and we encourage all our staff and I mean, often most of them participate, but we love it. So she comes once a week. And that's like a big thing too, that I'd have her come every day if it wasn't so expensive. Yeah. <laughs> She's, it's amazing. I mean, we, we're so proud that we can even offer that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fun. We do it in our front room. It's really great. So we have it, I think, yeah, tomorrow morning we have yoga at 8.30. But um, she's, obviously it's yoga. And so that's, you know, a lot of the theme behind it is being mindful and in the moment. And it really helps to have that, especially when you're about to start your day. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if only you could have that private yoga teacher every morning start the day with you. Yeah. But try and do it on your own the other days of the week. <laughs> but that leads me to another point is as a mom, um, I know you have a really cool culture in your business, like uh, there's dogs there and you're bringing in the yoga teacher, but you know, how do you think being a mom makes you a great leader in, in, within your team and within the community? Well, I mean, I think for one, just being a mom when you're in a company and you're running a business is, and I'm not saying men wouldn't do this or dads wouldn't do this. But I mean, it's a given if someone has a sick kid, the, the kid comes in or if someone's off of school or if someone has to leave to take care of something, it, it, it's not, I mean, it's, we want to be the opposite of what it's like to be working in some corporation or company where they're like, I have to leave for my kid's football game, but I can't ask because it's too early, you know, like it's, it's, you would never want that for yourself. So why would you want the people working for you or with you to feel that way? Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're very much like a family oriented company and we have kids here at least once a week there's someone here with a sick kid laying on the couch or stays off of school or I mean my son is here today he hasn't been feeling well so he's in the other room I think laying on the floor with the dog um, in my business partner's office mm -hmm. so that's you know something that you know is just a given I think as a mom you have more or you not more I'm sorry I shouldn't say that because it sounds like I'm putting down the, the other non-moms <laughs> or the dads. I mean, everyone can have this, but you end up sometimes having more compassion um, and you look at things differently because you're also, not only are you running a business, but you're wiping snot off your kid's nose. So, you know, if you're going to be doing both those things, you're not going to be only thinking this one way, you know? 
Yep. Um, and then in the community, I mean that too. If, if you're a mom with a business in the community, you're more involved than just a straight business owner or just a parent who isn't necessarily running a business. You know, you, I think, are more aware of the way things intertwine. <laughs> you're more aware of the way things affect each other. Um, it also helps guiding your children. Like when I talk to my kids and I'm saying to them, they have to be motivated or authentic or transparent. Those are things that I'm doing in my business. Mm -hmm. And I always, to be motivated, you have to, I know I try to motivate myself all the time, but, and I said, my business itself motivates me and my kids motivate me, but I have to motivate them too. So it's like a give and take. So by being a mom, you're sort of given and taking and you're using it in both places. Mm -hmm. um, and then being transparent. The one thing I like, I mean, the one thing we pride ourselves on is we're just 100% transparent. So I don't care what a customer wants to, anyone can say anything. We're always going to answer honestly. And we're going to, you know, there's no, there's no, there's not even a question about it. Like I'm never going to be that company or mom for that matter or person, but you know, reflecting on my company that doesn't disclose something or does something and then changes it. You know, we're very, we're just hundred percent transparent from the day we founded it until we are today. So I'm teaching my kids the same thing because it's values that I believe if I'm doing it in my business and hopefully I'm doing it in my own personal life. I want to teach my kids that I want to teach them in school. There goes cheating. You shouldn't be cheating. I would never do it in my business. Can't ever do it in school. And that's not the reason, <laughs> you know, you also have to teach your kids why it's morally not right <laughs> to do it. Right. It's not ethical, but you know, and breaking the rules and a lot of other reasons that you shouldn't, but it's incorporating both, your parenting into your business and your business into your parenting and then thus into the community. Mm -hmm. I mean, absolutely. That, you know, is that what you were like thinking or were you? Yeah. yeah. It's, I think there's a lot of moms that feel like they don't have the skills to do this or they need, you know, a certificate and or more education or whatever, but there's so many beautiful parallels between what we already do as moms and how that transfers into the business world and the community. So you already have those skills. You already have those strengths. Those things that are important to you as a mommy are important to you in your business and probably what make you so successful. I hope so. And my good looks. No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my hair, you know, it's usually curly. I made it straight, straight yeah, today. That, Doesn't that help? <laughs> I don't know, but I definitely think being a boss I'm that kidding. is compassionate. <laughs> I know is compassionate and understanding and flexible and transparent. All those things that you just talked about. Not every boss is that way. No, I agree. And I've worked before. I mean, it's been a long time since I had a boss, and I'm never again going to have a boss. Because <laughs> let me tell you, if I ever had a boss, I'd get fired or I'd quit. <laughs> <laughs> it, would, it, would, it would never work. Um, so yeah, that, you know, is, is in the history. But I think that being a mom adds a lot of value to being a boss. I really do. Yeah. And so it just... Oh, yeah. go ahead. No, I don't know. I'm good. I mean, I think I yeah. can't think of anything else to say right now. Well, I was just going to say, so ladies, you can be the boss of your house and the boss of your business. Just go ahead and be the boss everywhere. Just, just be the boss. Just be the boss. But, yeah, but with compassion and yep. be mindful. Be yep. the boss. And don't I let anyone it. tell you what you can do or can't do. I love it. I love it. Well, listen, I so, so, so appreciate you you sharing your story of just resilience and tenacity and everything that you've been able to do with the viewers. Um, just as a single yeah. entrepreneur, you're doing some amazing things. But I want to give you an opportunity. I know you're sharing a gift with the audience. So tell us about your gift and where folks can get it. Okay, so our gift with the audience. Well, actually, I don't have the URL. Do you have the URL? Brooke? Yeah, so you guys, you're going to click in the email that you receive okay. to click on this interview. You'll have access to the link to grab access to her free gift. The free gift. So the free gift that we're offering is $10, a $10 coupon, $10 off anything from the Baby Catan website. Um, and we're really excited because we are launching, like I said, new line items and we're venturing into new categories. So to add to the Baby Catan baby carrier, we just recently launched a diaper bag. Um, and it's actually really, really cool because it has a built in wet pack, a wet, wet bag built in that's antimicrobial, odor resistant, and FDA food grade. So you can either use it for like dirty diapers and stinky wet baby clothes or and spit up, or you can actually put food in it. I don't know that I would do both, yeah. but it's great because it's built into the bag. 
I actually use it, I put my gym shoes in it. So it's because it's odor resistant and it's, and it's um, antibacterial. So that's built into the bag. So yes, we have that really cool bag. And then we just launched into the swaddle blanket world. And we launched with um, a swaddle blanket that's using the fabric from one of our baby carrier lines. It's called the Breeze Baby Catan. So it's a natural cotton mesh. And everyone loves that fabric from our breeze line. And so we, we kept asking us to make it in a blanket. And we said, well, then why wouldn't we just make it in a blanket? So we went ahead and made it into a swaddle blanket. And so we just launched that. So on the website, there's the baby katan carrier and the diaper bags and the swaddle blankets. And we're offering $10 off on anything you want to purchase. That's awesome. And that is such a generous gift. So thank you guys. And if you guys haven't um, used or seen this product yet, you absolutely have to. It's amazing. It's life-changing. I've got one for my baby on the way, so check it out. And Michal, thank you so much for taking the time to talk to us today and just for sharing, um, really honestly, your story and kind of what you've done to overcome some obstacles and to achieve what you've achieved, which you should be really proud of. Well, thank you. Thank you for A, talking to me today and having me speak, and also thanks for praising me. That's always fun to hear. <laughs> <laughs> it always helps the ego, you know, motivation. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and it was a pleasure speaking with you, Brooke. This, I'm, I'm looking forward to doing more stuff. This is great. Uh, awesome. Well, you know, when we're our own boss, we don't always get that praise anymore. We don't get like an annual review or an award. Just tell your kids to praise you and don't give them a choice. <laughs> <laughs> to, to say it's time to praise mommy. It's oh, that time of the day. It's that time of the day. What do you love about mom? <laughs> right. And forget your homework. Just, just write a list of the top 10 things you love about mom. You know, and then get and then get to your homework. Yeah. You know what? If you actually do ask your kids like what they love about you or what they think you could improve upon, it's like crazy information. It's awesome. I know it really is. And actually, come to think of it, and I have three kids. Maybe I should be asking them. That's going to be like thirty things, ten of each. <laughs> probably going to be all different. <laughs> and there's probably going to be some criticism in there. Yeah. But I think I will get praise too. So <laughs> it's good. Yeah. I love it. So that's our final tip for today, guys. Ask your kids what they love about you as a mommy when you're not getting that praise anywhere else. You can exactly. Get it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Michal, and we'll talk real soon. All right. Thank you, Brooke. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.